suspense. Let's start with the obvious. What's the company? So we're short Tal Education Group, which is a China-based for-profit education company. Anyone who invests, Carson, in U.S.-listed Chinese equities is probably familiar with Tal Education. This is not a small company. This is a $26 billion company. The stock is up some 2,500% in the past five years. You say it's a fraud. Is that right? Yeah, so it's a real business, but its profits are fraudulent. So, you know, when you look at the appreciation of the stock price, you know, some people might say, wow, wow, it's so institutionalized. Why would they do this? Well, I would point to the value of the chairman's holdings. You know, five or three years ago, his holdings were only worth about $900 million. Today, they're getting close to $8 billion. So, there's your answer as to why. So, to be clear, though, it is a real business with real students and real learning centers. It's just not able to grow nearly as profitably as it's been portraying. I see. So this, there's a distinction. It's important, I think, to make this point. There's a distinction to be drawn between this kind of a fraud, and we'll get into the details of your thesis, and some of the other frauds you've exposed, which in the past you've described as zeros, right? There was nothing there. Empty offices, non-existent businesses. Is that right? Yeah, so there are there are a few things that are you know, to just that distinguish this from you know say a sino force. Okay, these guys are not making up ninety percent of their revenue. Now there is some you know just making numbers up in the revenue, and we're actually able to quantify at least a portion of that. But one of the other things that's unique about this is you know in the past we've said okay you know sino force the trees aren't there and. You would really have to, you know, figure out how to get over to Yunnan province in China to verify it. In this case, the, pr the fraud that we believe has inflated net income over the past three fiscal years by at least 43 percent, well, investors can look at our written report and there's a roadmap there. A lot of this is in documentation. And so they could actually follow this. So you don't have to actually show up at a factory to see that, oh, this, you know, this is a fraud. This isn't here. It is in the documents in this case. Now, the documents you speak of, I've had a look at your report. You say your thesis is supported by Chinese government documents. What kinds of documents and how on earth did you get your hands on them, given the fact that the Chinese by now have a pretty good idea of who you are and what you do? Sure. So going back to the very first time we ever exposed a Chinese fraud, we've, we've used financial uh, statements and other filings from what's known as SAIC, or the State Administration of Industry and Commerce. So companies file financials with SAIC regularly. And in the past, we were saying, well, hey, look, these SAIC financials show that, you know, you only have, you know, 5% of the revenue that you're, you're claiming that you do in the SEC filings. You know, what we see, what we then saw is that a lot of these companies began adjusting and they would file fraudulent financials with SAIC because there's no penalty for that that matched their SEC filings. But, you know, in any event, what we see here with, you know, with uh, TAL is you see a number of inconsistencies within the documents. So sometimes there are financials that have been amended or changed and we say, well, the earlier financials are the ones that look genuine. And so now it looks like they have penciled in about, you know, 80, 85 percent of fake revenue in this one business. But we're also able to see the games that they're playing with deferred revenue. But most importantly, from these SAIC filings is the shareholder registry. And that is not something that can be questioned. And when you look at the shareholder registries, you see that Tal has been lying about timing of investments and how it bought how it made these investments, et cetera. And that really goes to the heart of what they're doing, which turns out to be more Enron than Sinoforce, but does still have a little bit of Sinoforce mixed in. Uh, Carson, I want to mention that anyone who wants to understand your thesis better should go to the report that you're making available on the Muddy Waters website. Um, because we can't get deep into the details of the argument and the claims that you're making right here. But I do want to say this. Like any short seller, you know you have critics. I've talked to some of these critics. They say that you routinely twist 
or ignore facts that challenge your argument, what do you have to say in response, specifically as it concerns Tal, is that is it possible that you're overlooking something? And, and similarly, how confident are you in this call relative to calls that you've made in the past? Sure. So look, number one, of course, short sellers have their critics. I mean, you know, investing would be a lot easier if, you know, long onlys didn't have to actually do any real work to confirm their theses. I mean, if all you had to do is look at, you know, expectations of earnings growth and then, you know, press a button and buy the stock, you know, that would be great. And I think a lot of the criticism comes from people who kind of upset that, you know, we rain on that parade and say, no, there are actually surfaces that need to be scratched. So that's number one. Number two, you know, this in this case, I mean, look, when you do what we do, you have to be extremely confident because, you know, we get sued every so often, you know, regulators, you know, or I mean, you know, can look at us closely. It's so much easier if you're going out there with a positive bullish message about something to gild the lily. We are very transparent about how we do our work and on what we base our conclusions. We put that in the report. So, you know, much more so than anybody who's out there. But yeah, at the end of the day, investors should you know, always tell themselves that pretty much everybody who ever talks about a stock, whether they're a sell side analyst, you know, with a buy recommendation or an activist short seller, we have a vested interest in the outcome of our calls. So we are short and investors do need to think critically about all the information that's out there. Carson. So we never argue for anything different. Last we spoke just a week ago, we talked about a case that you're making, a much more widespread case for Chinese manipulation of U.S. capital markets. Where does TAL education and this particular th short thesis fit in that bigger picture? Sure. So there have been literally hundreds of frauds from China that listed in the U.S. and where pretty much everybody from the China side got away scot-free. I think only one chairman has ever done jail time in the U.S., they haven't done jail time in the in China for what they've done in the U.S. And the auditors got fined, you know, blew numerous audits. I mean, Tal's auditor, in this case Deloitte China, looks like it has blow, it has had at least 10 audit failures of China-based companies as of some point in 2012, which put it well ahead of the pack of all the big four and even auditors you've never heard of. And Deloitte and the other big four, they were only fined $500,000 for, um, you know, for, for their conduct here. So nobody has done, and nobody's been materially punished. What does that create? That creates this perverse incentive system where you, you know, if you're in China, you have no downside trying to defraud U.S. investors. So it's like Charlie Munger has long said, if you show me the incentive, I'll show you the outcome. Well, here it's a one-way bet. Succeed, be worth many billions of dollars. Fail, and who cares? There's no doubt in my mind that Tal Education will drop well below $40. Remember, though, however, in the case of Enron, Enron didn't drop all of a sudden just in one day. So in some of these situations take some time to develop. Now, the truth of the matter is, what I wanted to talk to you about is this. There's three main reasons why stocks fall. The video that you just watched gives you a great example how some companies are purely fraudulent. They overstate their earnings, they overstate their sales, and therefore, eventually, the stock price will fall. Now, the second reason why stock prices fall is there's always, every day in the market, that stocks drop for whatever the reasons, such as earnings, such as maybe the expectations of the investors are mismatched with what the company is actually reporting some potential news of maybe a takeover that doesn't go through. There's a ton of reasons why stocks fall daily. And at the end of this video, I'll actually give you a really good example of a stock that is not fraudulent, that actually has pretty good earnings, but regardless of that, it managed to fall by $100 in less than a couple of hours. So why am I talking to you about this? Well, because there's a lot of money to be made if you're a trader on identifying opportunities when stocks drop. Now, the third reason I wanted to share with you why stocks drop is when the entire market drops, it pretty much takes a lot of stocks down with it, even the best stocks. So 
you have three great opportunities to profit when stocks fall but you have to know exactly what to look for so I invite you to click the link below where I would like to take you on a journey and help you discover how I used five core fundamentals of shorting stocks through put options that helped me turn 12,000 into 466,000 in less than seven hours trading options from my laptop. In this video course, I will show you and help you discover the power of acceleration in trading options. And as any trader, the ultimate goal is to be free. So this is what you'll learn in this trading course. You'll discover the best stocks for trading options the stocks that you would be able to short through put options. You'll discover the top three chart patterns for huge returns when stocks fall. You'll get, discover the key to locking the gains. When do you exactly lock the gains? You'll discover the difference between the trend and TRO. Trend will make you money. TRO will make you a fortune. You'll discover the secrets behind timing. You'll discover how to trade the news and time the market reaction to the news to increase your profits. So the question is, are you wanting to learn how to make money when stocks fall? Are you ready for your breakthrough? Take a look at this great example which happened just recently. And the truth of the matter is, there are many examples like that that happen if not daily, but almost every other day whoa stop what is going on here well what you're looking at is a plummeted price of AutoZone stock in just a matter of an hour or two when it went up pre-market from 710 and fell later in the day all the way to 596 why should you care by utilizing a very simple option strategy we were able to turn every thousand dollars of investment from 9 30 in the morning till 10 45 a.m into an excess of $10,000. That's right, literally a $10,000 investment produced in excess of $100,000 in gains. The crazy truth about stocks and options trading, most of the fortunes were created when stocks fall. So if you're not utilizing this crazy strategy, you're definitely missing out on thousands of dollars and you're leaving that money on the table for somebody else. Look, these are the facts, just think about it. Stocks drop actually much, much faster than it takes them to climb higher. So just take a look. There's your AZO graph right here. It took it a month, two months to get from this 580 level all the way to about 700. And look how fast it dropped just in one day. Now, how do we know that this had a potential to happen? Look, it has a history of doing these things at the same level at around 700. It did it last time during the earnings report. So you don't have to be a rocket science. You just got to know which stocks, when to take action, and you got to know how to find the stocks. Has it ever occurred to you that every day when the market goes higher, there is plenty of stocks that actually drop? Because if every day some stocks did not drop, then the market would go to the moon, just like Bitcoin, right? The reality of life, everything that goes up must come down. Look at the housing bubble in 2008. Bitcoin prices, when nobody believed we put a recommendation at 18,800 to short Bitcoin. In other words, to make money when it falls. The bottom line is this, you don't need a market crash for you to actually profit on stocks falling. The opportunities are there every single day. You just got to know where to look for. If you grasp the simple idea that stocks fall much faster than they go up, you will be able to become a much more effective and efficient stock or options trade. Okay, hold on. So what you're saying is while everybody's chasing the stocks on the way higher, the real money is actually made when stocks drop. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you'd like to learn more about this fascinating and yet such a simple strategy, I invite you to go behind the scenes with me where I will reveal to you how I turned 12,000 into 466,000 in less than seven hours trading options with this strategy. And I know this sounds crazy, but I actually did it. And I want to share with you all the specifics, all the details of how I was able to accomplish that. So if you'd like to become a better trader, take action now. Click the link of the button below. Life is too short. Don't waste another minute. Today is your day.